Fade out one. Fade in three. Pizza Flicks Television Division presents... Suspense. almost ten years ago. What's to become of me, Jenny, while you're gone? Well, why don't you go down one of the beaches for the change? You must have something left from your winter's wages. Little enough. Richard, I'm afraid you're a trifle irresponsible. However, I'm tired of just living here in the bookshop. I'm going to go away somewhere all by myself, not even look at a book while I'm gone. Now, don't dawdle. I'll take this out and tack it on the door. Richard, what are you doing? Nothing. I saw you put it back. I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, Richard, you've been taking money from the cash register all along. I knew you had. What's one or two dollars to you? It's stealing. Stealing? After the few miserable pennies you've been paying me to work for you? Well, you're a strange boy, Richard. You seem to forget that I took you in when you needed help and gave you a job. I didn't ask you to. I'm sorry, Jenny. Really, I am. I think you're sorry very easily. You've been sorry often before when you've been caught. Time you were taught a lesson. What are you going to do? I'm going to call the police. You see, I've come to believe that you're not the poor homeless innocent you pretend to be. But I haven't any home. I haven't anybody. I think you're a little dangerous, Richard, especially to lone women who might be susceptible to a boy with a nice smile. <gasps> you're not going to call the police anybody. You're not going to call anybody. Richard. Jenny's bookshop. Closed for the summer and Miss Jenny away on a little trip. Richard! Call Jenny as loud as you want. Nobody's ever going to hear you. Oh, it's no bother at all. Uh, thank you. Could I help you? There's oh, a lot to carry. I know, but I, I think I... Oh, oh. <laughs> here, let me have it. Oh, no, no, I wouldn't dream of oh, it. Oh, please, please, let me have it. Well, all right, if you want to. We just live on 54th Street. You live in the neighborhood? Well, no, I, I guess I don't live much of any place. I mean, I haven't any family. Oh, you poor boy. I suppose you've a nice family, though. You look as if you did. Well, Mr. Hackett is dead, but my two daughters are with me. Three of you. You live alone. Yes, <laughs> just three lone women. You know, that's really very nice of you. Oh, well, I like doing it. For a moment, I can pretend you're my family. <laughs> Louisa? Louisa, dear, are you going out tonight? Yes, Mother, I'm going to the theater with Ned Bassett. Why? Well, Richard's coming to dinner. But Oh, for heaven's sakes, Mother, he practically lives here. He just likes a square meal now and then, Lou. Even poets have to eat. Poets? Oh, I'd like to see him get a job. Eva, oh, dear. Well, I have a surprise for you. You know, the house weather's coming on us, and I asked Richard to go into the country, see if he could find a house for us for the summer. Oh, did he find one? Yes, he called this afternoon, said he found a lovely place on the Long Island North Shore. It's down among the sand dunes. Called Wisteria Cottage. Oh, peachy. I suppose he's coming to stay there with us. Yes, I invited him. He says there's a little shack on the place that he can fix up and he'll live there. Mother, 
Don't you think we're getting in a little too deeply with Richard? Oh, Louisa, dear, I'm very fond of Richard. And it'll be nice, three women alone, down in the country, to have a man around the house. Oh, he won't be in the way, Lou, living by himself in the shack. Well, okay, if you two girls want it, I'll only be down on weekends anyway. I have my job. Oh, that must be it. <laughs> Bye, darling. Goodbye, Bye. dear. Now, we'll pack tomorrow, and then we'll go just as fast as we can. Oh, Richard says it's perfectly lovely. Not another house within a mile. <laughs> He nearly bit my head off when I told him we were having guests again this weekend. Well, it's probably the heat. We won't. That's a trouble. Why? It's the poet, Lou. Temperament. Schmoet poet. Is that you, Richard? Oh, hello, Richard. Hello, Louisa. Hi, Eleanor. Hi, Rich. Did you and Jeff get the clam? Yeah. You sure did. Well, how do you folks like it down here? Oh, now? we love it. And thank you for being so helpful. Oh, anytime, anything I can do, you can find me in the village. It's wonderful. Very we'll nice. have them for dinner. Oh, Ned Bassett likes steam clams, doesn't he, Lou? Sure he does. But me, we're still having guests, I take it. Only Ned. Do you mind? Well, I'll go make with the clams. Get up an appetite, everybody. Well, Richard, I believe you're jealous. You know, you can't have it to yourself all the time. I heard Louisa talking. You want to get rid of me. I'm sorry, Florence. It's just you're the only family I've ever had. Oh, Richard, nobody wants to get rid of you. Oh, no? No. That's what you think. Richard, you never came over to dinner. I went for a walk down the beach. Ned Bassett arrived with a huge bouquet of flowers for Mother. Oh, Richard, snap out of it. What's the book? Jenny's Bookshop. Give me that. Leave it alone. Richard, you're a funny boy. Eleanor, I know just now I can't buy you a lot of flowers like Ned Bassett brings your mother... You're so terribly sweet, Eleanor. You're the nicest of all to me. Well, you're pretty nice yourself. When you want to be. Eleanor. 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 Would you marry me? Marry? Yeah, yeah, right away. Tomorrow. Then I show. Eleanor, would you? Oh, Richard. Not good enough for you. For somebody you picked up out of the gutter. Now huh? it's all in fun. Get out. Go on. Get out of here. Richard, I'm, I'm sorry I was so snippy to you, but... Well, Ned just wanted to say hello. How are you, Richard? We missed you at dinner. I was busy. What do you say, young fellow? We're all going down to little old port, Jeff. Paint the village red. Come on, the whole family's going, even Mother. On your feet, old boy. No, I don't want to. Oh, come on, Richard, don't be like that. Will you... Will you please all get out of here and leave me alone? I'm sick of it. Okay, if you want to be that way. Come on, Ned. You're missing something, pal. Honestly, Richard, it's a good thing you're a poet, or you'd have a hard time explaining things. You knew I wanted to go?
Richard. Why did you do it? Do what? Last night, you know, up at the cottage. The cyclone. You're crazy. I was asleep. There's the small boys in the village. They did it. We found this when we cleaned up this morning. Your fish knife. Some other time, that's all. Good go, but it won't stick. Look, what's the idea, pal? This is hacking. The girls have been pretty decent to you. Not what I'd call a shining act of gratitude. What business is it of yours? Well, you might say that I'm interested in the family. Yeah, yeah, you bet you are. I see what you're up to. You're worming your way in through Louisa. You can't wait till you have me thrown out. Oh, for Pete's sake, Richard. Hey, fuck her. What are you trying to do? Murder somebody? Cut me. No, no, no. What's going on here? So Richard just tried to knife me, that's all. Rich! If I were you, I'd throw him out on his ear. What did I tell you? And that was Richard last night. Was it, Richard? I didn't know what I was doing. Please don't. No, Richard. Go pack your things. Suppose I won't go. Well, I think that's a matter for the police. Bad enough what you did to the cottage, but now this murderous attack on Ned. I don't know what's happened to you, Richard, after all we've done for you. I'm sorry you, you were our friend once, but you don't seem to be any longer. I'll expect you to be out of here within the hour. You're right, Mrs. Hackett. The sooner the better. Come here. We'll, we'll put a dressing on that arm. See the second act of tonight's suspense story, Wisteria Cottage. But right now, friends, during this brief intermission, I have a little story for you. It's a story about June and Moon and Spoon and Croon. Ah, yes, you know, this is the season when a young man's fancy lightly turns to thoughts of love. And our romantic Romeo is no exception. In fact, here he is with his favorite girl off for a quiet drive to ask her to be his lifetime Juliet. Yep, he's on top of the world and feeling fit as a fiddle. Hey, but what's wrong? Huh, his car's bucking like a jilted lover. Uh-oh, you know what? It's acting like that because the spark plugs aren't functioning properly. Huh, it looks a kill, for Romeo would be a dead duck. And as it is, he feels mighty small. <laughs> well, you know, friends, a lot of people think that spark plugs are just something that go into an automobile. But actually, they're a mighty important part of your engine. Yes, sir. Because if your spark plugs aren't functioning properly, your car can be sluggish, can use too much gasoline, can lose power, and in general, fail to perform the way you want it to. You see, a spark plug must fire and ignite the fuel in the cylinder many thousands of times each minute. And the importance of this precision firing is that it helps determine the smooth and economical operation of your car. Now, you know that spark plugs are only one part of the ignition system. Other parts include... The battery, the ignition coil, the distributor, and the spark plug wires. And all these parts, including Autolite spark plugs, are engineered by Autolite ignition engineers. They're the men who designed the complete ignition system that's used as original factory equipment on many of America's finest cars and trucks. Now, because these men know about ignition, naturally it follows that they're experts on spark plugs. And that's why ignition-engineered Autolite spark plugs are designed to work together as a perfect team with the other parts of the ignition system. Believe me, they're unexcelled for quick starting, smooth performance, and gas mileage. And they're world famous for quality and dependability. Now, they come in types and sizes for every purpose, including the popular Autolite resistor type, one of the greatest advances in spark plug design for automotive use in the past 20 years. So, friends... Why don't you see your Autolite spark plug dealer tomorrow and have worn-out spark plugs replaced by ignition-engineered Autolite spark plugs. Whether you choose the standard type or the resistor type, you can be very sure that you can't buy better spark plugs for your car. Well, sir, 
We uh, installed a set of those wonderful Autolite resistor spark plugs in romantic Romeo's car, and now he and his girl and his car are in perfect harmony. So with everything going so smoothly, Romeo popped the question, Juliet said yes, and they lived happily ever after, which proves once again that you're always right with Autolite. Second act of our suspense story, Wisteria Cottage, starring Conrad Janis and Marjorie Gateson. I don't know what's the matter with me, dear, but the house seems so empty with everyone away. Mr. B, you just wait for next Friday. You know, Eleanor, I can't get over Paul Richard. Whatever made him change, so do you suppose? It's really a strange boy, that Richard. Well, he's gone now, but I did half expect him to come in and say goodbye. He just packed his things and left. Mother, what you I wonder if he really has gone. I thought I saw him on the beach yesterday afternoon. Huh? On one of the dunes. When I went closer, he disappeared. But he left Saturday and this is Tuesday. I know. Of course, it might not have been Richard. Oh, my. It gives me the strangest feeling... Did you talk with Jeff Simmons down in the village? He said he'd come out for a week. Yes, he'll be here this evening. Uh, I'll feel a little safer. Now, I don't know why I say that. I'm sure whatever Richard did, he's still very fond of us. Where are you going? To lock the door. I've always locked doors, you know. All my life, I've locked... Eleanor, come here. What is it? The shack down there. Is that the moon shining on a window, or is that a light? Well, I can soon find out. No, dear, I'm not going alone. I'll go with you. Oh, hey, darling, I'm not afraid. So what if it is, Richard? Now, you stay here until Jeff Simmons comes. You sure? Of course. So Richard and I are pals. Oh. <laughs> Darling, we're going back to the cottage now. Come on, dear. But, but, Mother, you're not sure it was Richard. Well, look, I'll try to get down there tonight if I can catch a train. All right, darling, goodbye, and don't worry. Ned, darling, do you mind terribly if I break our date tonight and go down there? I think I can catch a train around nine. Oh, I'd mind if you did it that way. Look, I'll drive you down. But what about the business tonight? I'll come back in the morning. Ned, you're such a lamb. Let's hurry, darling. Oh, I do wish that Jeff Simmons would talk. Oh, he'll be here, he promised. Do you suppose that Richard has been hiding in the cottage or down in the shack all this time? We don't know. Well, I know, but that door was closed this afternoon. Oh, he, he might be outside watching us right now. Is the kitchen door locked and bolted? Oh, I think I'll call Jeff Simmons. Four, five, one. Hello? Yeah. Hello? Operator? I, I can't get the operator. Be sure. Try it again. Operator. Operator. Oh, no, it's, it's this. Now, Mother, you know how often the phones down here go out of order. I know, but I just talked with Louisa just a few minutes ago. Operator. Before. Operator. Operator. Honestly, now you're giving me the jitter. I don't suppose somebody could have cut the wire. No, of course not. Now, Mother, relax. It's probably a line down somewhere. Here. You 
Read this magazine. I'll go make some coffee. Drop in. Yes, this is so I see. I have a right to all right. I don't know about right, Richard. I do. I was the first one to come down here. I found Wisteria Cottage. You can't say I didn't. And then you took it over, just like you took me over. I trusted you until you got jealous and started persecuting me and drove me out. Well, I've come back now, do you see? But my point is, Richard, that there's no reason to get excited. Excited? Yes, no, no reason at all. There's no sense in it. Now, trying to tell me what to do? Oh, no, Richard, no. Only if you have come back, well, I... Well, I'd like you to sit down a little. Ah. Richard, no one. You. That's just your imagination. And there's no sense to the things you've been doing. No sense at all. As, as I said to Louisa, oh, that Louisa. you... Louisa? Mm-hmm. New York. I put her on the telephone. She's coming out. She may be out tonight. Where's Ellen? In the kitchen, making coffee. Richard, why didn't you tell us that you were still? I didn't want to. That's why. Look at that fair to work. We're all alone. Yeah. Yeah. I waited for you. Hello, Mr. Hello, Mr. living and you resent it. You gotta have somebody take your spite out of it. I didn't see that till I came down here, but then I saw it. It's me. Me. You're wrong, Richard. Who was it that did all your work? Fetched and carried and you ordered around like a dog. You started with. Is that a crime? Yeah, yeah, it's with someone like you. Somebody trying to hang on by a fingertip to a kind of life he's never had. To a kind of home that's put to you. That's not the greatest thing I could give you. After what you've done to me, it's like heaping coals of fire. to come to me. Of cureless ills, thou art the one physician. Richard, what? What is that? That's the breach. It's beautiful, even now, Richard. You know the hammer? Come there. Say we end the heartache and the 
and all the natural shocks that flesh is here to. And then there's another one to another one. So softly death succeeded life in her. She did but dream of heaven, and she was Richard! Don't you remember what you told me that day in the shack? That you liked me so much? Did you laugh that day, Richard? I wouldn't laugh. <laughs> be done with bringing you this series during the past season, and now following tonight's show, we're all going to take a summer vacation. But eight weeks from tonight, we'll be back with you with a new suspense show starting the new series. And now for our producer, Robert Stevens, Hank Silburn, who makes our music, and our fine technical crew, this is Rex Marshall, hoping you'll be with us in eight weeks, and until then, saying God bless you, and good night. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.